Hello students, welcome to another lecture of the lecture series that is on the two and three pillar technologies. This lecture we will see about the introduction of the two and three pillar vehicles. Right? Which are the vehicles that we saw in the previous lecture about the classification. Now we will see about the layout of those vehicles and also we will see the systems that is required to keep the vehicle in the running condition. So let's first start with the layout of the moped. In the case of the moped or better known as the Luna, in the case of the Luna, the layout you can see right now on the screen. In the case of the layout, normal schematic diagram of the Luna has been drawn and all the components has been numbered. By the number you can see or you can read the name of the same component. In the case of the components, you can see the first component that is headlight. The second component is the fuel tank that is located at the front of the driver. The third one is the brake lever from where you can apply the brakes on the vehicle. The fourth one is the frame or we can say the body of the moped. The fifth one is the seat on which the driver can sit and drive the vehicle. The next one or sixth number is the tail lamp that is being given for the brake lights. Seventh one is the rear suspension. Eighth is the rear brakes. Ninth one is the exhaust of the moped from which the exhaust gases will come out from the engine. The next is the engine that is being shown at the number 10. With the engine, the pedal has been attached. That is the main component of the moped in which the pedal is used to start the vehicle. Also, you can drive the moped as a bicycle if there is no petrol or fuel in the fuel tank. Right, so you can also pedal it like a bicycle. The front brake has been given and the front suspension at the number 11 and number 12. So this is a common layout for the moped. Now let's see the second layout that is of the scooter. In the case of the scooter layout, the normal, the older version of the scooter has been shown. Right now, also the Activas and Jupiters are considered as the category of the scooters as well. But we will see the basic layout of the scooter when it was invented first. So the number one is again the headlight. The second one is the front dome, which gives the cover to the driver at the front side. The third one is the front suspension and the fourth one is the brake at the front side. The fourth, fifth one is the rear brake lever from which you can apply the rear brakes. The sixth one is the footboard. The seventh one is the exhaust. The footboard is given for the support of the driver or to keep the foot of the driver when he is driving the scooter. The exhaust again given for the exhaustion of the engine exhaust gases. The eighth one is the engine compartment. The ninth one is the body of the vehicle which encloses the engine and other components of the scooter. The next one is the spare wheel which has been given in the older scooters. Whenever there is a puncture or breakdown of the tire, then you can change the older tire with the spare tire and you can keep the vehicle in the running condition. Next is the fuel tank which is being given below the driver that is number 11. 12 is the seat for the drivers and the passenger as well. The storage space has been provided at the front of the driver just to store small stuffs in the scooters. And the last one is the front brake lever that is been given in the applying the front brakes. Next is the layout of the motorcycle. Now in the case of the motorcycle we have taken the example of a normal or basic design of the motorcycle. Most of the components we know about starting from the mirror, the fuel tanks, the riser, the turn lights, the dip lights, the fender is also provided in case of the bikes as well for the protection of, from the dust and other particles. 
Also, the suspension is given wheel grip on which the tire is mounted. Also, the brake disc is provided because generally, in the case of the bias, we are using the disc brakes. And whenever we are using the disc brake, the brake disc will be provided on which the brake will be mounted. The frame of the bike is given on which all the components have been mounted or arranged such as engine, suspension system, steering system, etc. etc. The engine in this as well is given in below part of the driver or below the fuel tank that is being given in the bikes. Same component is given on the rear side as well. The seat is given for the driver and one passenger as well. As we know that two wheelers are always for the two person driving. So these are the basic layouts for the moped, scooters and motorcycle. In the next we will see the layout of the three wheelers. For the three wheeler we have taken the example of a simple auto rickshaw. In the case of the auto rickshaw you can see all the components. The main component is canopy or the body which covers the whole structure. The body or the enclosed body which is given for the auto rickshaw and generally protects from the direct sunlight to the passengers as well as drivers. Right. So this is the main or the basic component of an auto rickshaw which is an useful for the daytime driving which protects you from the sunlight also during the rainy season it will protect you from the rainy water. Let's see the basic six systems that is being used in the two and three wheelers. First, the frame for the two wheeler. Now, the frame will look like the picture you are seeing on the screen. This is a basic type of frame that we can use in the motorcycles. The frame is used to mount it, to mount all the components on them or to take the loads that will come from the roadside. Whenever there is an obstacle, then the load will come from the suspension to the frames. So frame should not bend or deflect and it should be able to sustain those loads. So these, this, this is why the frames are a necessary component for the two wheelers as well. Second component is the wheels and brakes. Right? So wheels and brakes are an important factor. The wheel which is required to keep the vehicle or to transmit the power of the engine to the road and brakes are required to stop the vehicle or to lower the speed of the vehicle. Right? So these two are the basic components that we will always require in the two wheelers or three wheelers whichever vehicle we are using. Next system is the suspension system. In the case of the suspension system for the two wheelers we are generally using the assembly of the spring and the shock absorber. Generally, in the case of the spring and shock absorber assembly, the telescopic type shock absorber is used. Generally, we also have seen the components or the two wheelers in which without spring only telescopic shock absorber is also used as a suspension in the two wheelers as well. But the main two components for the suspension in case of the two and three wheelers will be spring and the shock absorber assembly. Next is the engine of the two wheelers. Now in the case of the engines for the two wheelers, generally there will always be a petrol engine. Right? For the two wheelers, we are using diesel or CNG engine in very few vehicles. More than 90% vehicles uses the engine with the petrol. So, in the case of the petrol engine, there are other two categories that is the two-stroke and four-stroke engines. Now, earlier vehicle that was earlier two vehicles was using the two-stroke engine. Also, there are some vehicles nowadays as well that uses the two-stroke engine. But in the most number of cases, the engines that we are using right now is the four-stroke petrol engines. Right. So, it is better to use the force of petrol engine for the vehicle. Next is the drive train. Now, first in the case of the drive train, how the vehicle power or the engine power is transmitted, that will be first seen. And then from one wheel, how the power is transmitted to the second wheel. 
For example, if you see in the motorcycle, the chain drive is used to transmit the power from the one wheel to the other wheel. So this is how the chain drive is useful to transmit the power. Also to power, transmit the power from the engine, the clutch and also the gear box will be used in case of the manual transmission. In case of the automatic transmission, we will use the CVT system. Right? So there will be some component that is used to transmit the power from the engine either gearbox or CVT and after transmitting it to any one wheel to transmit it the power to the second wheel we will have to use either chain drive or belt drive depending on the vehicle right so next and some extra components that is also required to keep the vehicle in the running condition first is the fuel system the fuel system is required to supply the fuel in the engine. Generally, we use the petrol. So, to supply the petrol in the engine, we require the fuel system. Second is ignition system. Right? Generally, mainly the petrol engines are used. And for the petrol engine to start the vehicle, the spark plug is required. And to start the spark plug or to give the spark at the starting, the ignition system is required. Now the ignition system has many types such as the battery system, the magneto system, right? Also in the two-wheeler there are multi-purpose starting has been given right now such as the self-start or the kick-start. The self-start uses battery system, the, uh, the kick-start uses the magneto system. So these are the various types that are required for the two-wheelers or to start the ignition of the two-wheelers. And at last the electrical system component which works on the electrical power or electronic power nowadays as well. There are some of the vehicles that is higher budget uses the sensors or the electronic systems as well. So in case of the electrical systems, mainly the indicators, the speedometers, the odometers, all these things works on the mostly right now on the electrical systems, the self-start system. Right, so these are the systems. Also the headlight, the tail light, side indicator light, these are the electrical systems. So for that we require the battery, for battery we require the charging system and for the vehicle charging we also require the starting system. So these are the main or simple basic systems that is required in the two or three wheelers to keep the vehicle in the running condition. So, in this video, we saw about the layout of the two and three wheelers and also we saw about the introduction of the basic system that we are required in the two and three wheeler. From the next lecture, we will start our chapter number two that is on the power plant of the two and three wheelers. Until then, thank you so much.